you very much. This is a paper on the police transparency in the public sector, the case of social benefits in Tanzania, which we are doing jointly with uh, my colleagues, Gemma, who is here, Elnema is here, plus uh, Christine. And the, this work was uh, motivated uh, as a result of um, the third mode we are in Tanzania. And therefore, the presentation will be as follows. First, I will briefly motivate. Then I'll talk a bit on uh, what is that social benefit, which is the productive social safety net, and the, how is the legitimate criteria determining between the productive social safety net for the case of Tanzania. And then my colleague Gemma will proceed with uh, telling the problems we faced. How do we how do we simulate the PCN cash transfer within the third mode? and give some sort of uh, recommendations where the government will consider for policy changes. As I said, this work was motivated by the challenge we faced when we were implementing social benefit in, within the task mode. And our concern was that we have to be very clear on how we define and measure and give it criteria in such a way that it is transparent and in our dictionary. And those are very critical because we want to show that we minimize external exclusions. We want to show that uh, we attain uh, accuracy and th such that uh, the criteria itself is uh, more of uh, cost effective and establish uh, cohesion. And th that is very important uh, when we are working in the social professions. Why? Because uh, you want to see at the end of the day such that the delivery of social benefits is uh, done in a very good way, such that there's no complaints, there's no conflicts. And this has become very important nowadays in most countries in the region, simply because uh, most countries, including Tanzania, are taking social protection as a very, very important uh, to ensure that uh, we attain the so-called in inclusive growth and the sustainable growth, so that we have big impacts on the poverty and the inequality. So for that, we can see that uh, most countries, uh, and most uh, even uh, uh, economic blocks, they have put social protection as a key in ensuring that uh, they translate the high economic growth for the majority of the people. For the Tanzania, we have that one within the constitutions. It's also within the national social policy. It is also even within the SADAC, the so-called Charter of Fundamental Social Rights in SADAC. It's also within even Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So we are taking social prote protection to be very important and then apply social benefits. The challenge is how do you come with the eligibility criteria, which is the transparency and the decisionary? Why that's very important? Because we want to minimize uh, the so-called external exclusions and ensure that it's much more cost-effective. As that of that one, our focus, uh, as far as Tanzania is concerned, is on the productive social safety nets. And I'm going to talk uh, just a bit on how this is coming to being. This is a program which was started in the year 2012. It started as a pilot for only three districts, but as we speak today, it has gone as far as 1.1 million households. It has got around 5.04 beneficiaries. It's a cut across around 161 project areas and around almost 10,000 villages. So it has upscaled a lot from 2012 to 2016. And as far as World Bank is, is concerned, we tell you that this is one of the second largest uh, social benefits in Africa. And their conclusion is that uh, it's doing very well. Even though there have been some issues, one of them being the external exclusions. Much as we said that it has targeted almost 96% of those who are targeted, yet there are some issues. But more importantly, the issue to us is more to deal with the criteria. This uh, productive social safety net programs has got like uh, six components. Our focus is only on the two components. The first one is the fixed based cash transfer, and the second one is a variable conditional cash transfer. This is what we are focusing, although there are others which include public works program strength, level program, and infrastructure strength but our focus is only on the two components. And as I said before, our concern is on how we come with the 
you use the criteria which is much more transparent and discretionary. For the first one, on the fixed basic cash transfer, here's where we have, uh, if it, an household has been determined as being poor, that particular household is entitled to 10,000 shillings. And if that particular household has got the children, it's given 4,000 shillings as a lump sum. So if one is qualified for this first transfer, which is the basic cash transfer, the second stage to, is to look whether it has other condition which will allow that particular household to, to be to the entitlement of having condition cash transfer. So once you qualify for this one, the second stage to see, do you have pregnant women? Do you have children? And once you have that one, now you're entitled for the second one, which is the, the variable condition cash transfer. And this one, if you have got kids, seven to 17 uh, of age, you are entitled to a lump sum of 4,000 shillings. If you, you have kids which are below six years, zero to five, you are entitled to a lump sum of, again, 4,000. If you have kids who are going to school, primary school, uh, for each, you are entitled for 2,000 shillings. So the maximum is four, so it's close to 8,000 shillings. If you have got kids who are in secondary, you are entitled for three kids. For each, you are being given 4,000 shillings. And if you have got kids who are in advanced secondary school, you are entitled only for two kids. And for this, you are given uh, 6,000 shillings. So in maximum, if the family comply to all conditions, it's around 50,000 shillings. Now, once we have these two uh, uh, components of PS PSN, let me very briefly I'll skip this one because of the sake of time, give you what it contains for someone to be elected. And in a very simple and the direct way, this is how it goes. First, the TASAF, uh, the Tanzania Social Action Fund, identified the so-called project area authority on the community level. They're known as the project area authority, uh, pro project, project area, I think it should be project authority areas. Once you have that one, the first stage is to have the so-called village assembly. This village assembly is doing two things. One, it establishes criteria other than the one given by TASAF. Secondly, it identifies the so-called community management team. The community management team and the local government authority, they identify a list of those who are beneficiaries. And this one will be based on two criteria. One, are those households which are, are poor, that they are food poor. And there is the amount given there by the HBS, 26,000 shillings, equivalent to something like $12, 000, uh, $12 per month. And once they have identified that number, the list of those who are poor, they go back to the village assembly to verify. And once that one is done, that one enters the so-called unified register list. And once you have that one, the team from TASAF, which is known as TASAF monitoring unit, they apply the so-called uh, uh, PMT, PROX, they, they apply the so-called PMT to determine whether this particular household qualify or not qualify. And those who are below the score are referred as qualified. Those who are above are not qualified. Once you have this, again, you go back to the village to verify. So there's a sort of a very uh, multi-stage process to determine whether a particular household is qualified or not qualified. And it's because of this one, we think that uh, there are some issues here. And these are some of the implications. One, no citizen of Tanzania will be able to ascertain whether they were eligible or not to take part in the social benefits. Given that the process is too multi-stage with a lot of abrasiveness arbit here, it's quite difficult for people to understand whether they're qualified or not qualified. So things are not very transparent. Two, there is potential for confusion and even social disarmament. And the three, structurally reinforces the treatment of beneficiary as a passive recipient. And lastly, we are saying that technically it's impossible for a household to confidently challenge a decision to exclude it from the program, even though grievance processes do formally exist. The first port of call for comp complaint is the village council, and there is a complaints hotline. And it has a, given the newspaper which we are back home, 
there are some issues that uh, those who qualify were not included and those who were included were not qualified. So there are those issues. Having, having motivated and they say, what's all about P, uh, PS, PSN, let me allow my colleague here to proceed with the last part. Thank you, Angelo. We encountered these uh, multiple and opaque eligibility criteria in the process of building TESMOD, um, the, the static tax benefit micro simulation model for Tanzania, um, which we undertook um, jointly at UNE Wider, Sasbury, University of Essex, and the University of Dar es Salaam. Um, it's underpinned by the Household Budget Survey, and um, we rated the monetary variables to a 2015 time point using the CPI in order to attempt to simulate policies relating tax and benefit policies relating to 2015. And the, the various policies we simulated are listed here and importantly for this um, is the first two, the PSSN fixed basic cash transfer and also the variable conditional cash transfer. Um, Ironically, it was very straightforward for us to um, implement the proxy means test because though the formula for the proxy means test is not in the public domain, it was kindly shared with us and the model uses as its dependent variable a um, uh, flag of those who are household poor in the, um, uh, below the food poverty line in the very same survey that we were using. So we were able to circumnavigate the whole proxy means test process and, and identify potentially eligible people as um, those who fell below the food poverty line. Um, we um, um, simulated the two elements of the cash tra transfers separately and, and then combined them together because they, in combination, are assigned a cap of 38,000 shillings per household per month. At, at that time point. And the average household size of these eligible families was um, six and three quarters people. Um, we, um, going through this process, have got um, four recommendations just quickly. Firstly, is a, is, a, is a strong recommendation that it would be advantageous for everybody if their eligibility rules uh, were simplified, not obviously just for ourselves as micro simmers, but for the citizens of Tanzania and also the, for the government that's um, administering this policy. We would um, recommend removing the proxy means test, which causes a great deal of confusion, and indeed the community screening process, which I'll address in the next slide, and replacing it with um, simple categorical targeting. And there are local examples of this in the form of the Universal Pension, pension Scheme in Zanzibar that's just been rolled out and the pilot that's happening in mainland Tanzania in the Yega district at the moment. It's particularly attractive given the size of the proxy means test related inclusion and exclusion errors that have been reported for Tanzania in the recent World Bank paper that is very interesting to read. And it would help ensure that the policy is clearly understood across all stakeholders and communities. Regarding the communities themselves and their roles, we'd recommend converting their role from gatekeeper to overseer, um, which would enable them to participate in the design of the simplified criteria and continue to monitor local implementation, but eliminate the problematic aspects of selecting, scrutinizing, and potentially vetoing participants in the program with all the problems that that brings with it. Um, Given that um, almost all of the households contained children and the two benefits are combined together, um, another method of simplicity with multiple positive effects would be the removal of the conditionality um, but whilst retaining the goal of ensuring that children access health and education related services, which is the motivation behind the conditionality. Um, many of the um, challenges the families face relate to supply side challenges which um, still need to be addressed. And so it would shift the em emphasis away again from scrutinizing the behavior of recipients of cash benefits towards promoting access to education and health. And lastly, promoting public awareness 
um, it would encourage transparency and take-up and would be in line with the National Social Protection Framework, which recognises that public information is a key element of community empowerment. Thank you. Got selected references in our flags to go. Thank you.